Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how we can use several functions in Excel to take a two-dimensional range and filter it both horizontally and vertically, sum up those filtered values, and also count the number of values that were used to total up that sum. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have a data range here that's 30 rows high, 12 columns wide. You can see the 12 months of the year. And I have structured three different locations, two different types of systems, and three different types. And again, I also have the quarters listed in row four. And I want to be able to use my data validation drop down list in order to choose the various scenarios here and get a total of the value of that filtered area both vertically using location system and type and horizontally choosing the quarter to come up with a total value of what's filtered and the number of values that comprised that total. So for our process here I'm going to choose Cleveland, I'm going to choose stable, type A, and Q3 to come up with 156 comprised of three different values. Now, I have several named ranges. I have location, system, and type, along with quarter to list the items in row four to make it easier to see what the formula is actually doing. Now the primary function here that we're going to use is the sum product function. We're going to use the offset, match, counta, and count if to define our range, and then we're going to determine or use location, system, and type to then filter that down. So how does sum product work? If I type equals sum product, you can see it returns the sum of the products of corresponding ranges or arrays. So we take the range that goes from the offset, match, count, and count if that defines our range, multiply that times where the location equals A2, which is Cleveland, times where the system equals B2 stable, times where the type equals C2, which is A, and it filters that all the way down or reduces that down. And then after those, it creates that product, it sums those values up and therefore, that's how we get sum product. It sums the product or the results of those products. So the first thing we're going to do is determine our range. And we're going to use the offset function to do that. And if I type equals offset, you can see it returns a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a given reference. And if I hit tab, you can see I start out with a reference or an anchor point. I go down X number of rows over X number of columns. And then using that as our new starting point, how high do I want that range to be and how wide do I want that range to be? So in our formula here, in our offset, our reference, our starting point is D6, which is where the number 58 is. That's in the upper leftmost corner of our values. Then rows, I'm going to go down zero rows because I want to use that as my starting point. Columns, I want to use the match function to go over so many columns to get to where I want to start using the range, in this case, over to where Q3 starts. Then how high do I want it to be? I'm going to use the count of function to determine the height of the range. And then I'm going to use this count if function to determine the width of the range. So let's go through the formula. And we're going to start by going to the Formulas tab and to Evaluate Formula and have Excel walk us through at least how the initial range was determined. And then we'll go a different process to go to the rest of the formula. So the first thing Excel wants to do is go to the Match function and determine, OK, what is D2? Well, D2, we know that's going to be Q3. So I hit Evaluate. It says Q3. I have that range defined as quarter, and that is D4 to 04. So what is Q3 
in that range with an exact match. That's what the zero is. So where is that? That is seven over. But I don't want to go seven over because if I start at D6 and I go seven over, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have to subtract one to get back to the first column of Q3. So that's why we subtract one. So I have six. So I start out at D6. I go down zero over six. Now, how tall do I want that range to be? Well, I'm just going to count all the items in column L. I could have picked any one of the columns, really. And I'm subtracting two to get rid of the two for the two headers there. So you can see, since I have 30 values, it gives me 32 minus the two in the headers. So my range is 30 rows high. Now, how many columns Y do I want? I'm going to use the COUNTIF function in the range called quarter to see how many times D2, which again is Q3, appears. If I do that, it should give me the number 3. So by using the offset function, I've been able to define my range by starting at D6, going down 0, over 6, 30 rows high, 3 columns wide. And if I hit evaluate, there are the values that are within that range. You can see it starts out 0, 42, 72. So that's 0, 42, 72. Then it is 53, 68, 35. Those are the next three, 53, 68, 35, and so on. So I have basically 90 numbers here, three columns wide, 30 rows tall. Now, unfortunately, in the evaluate formula tool here, it doesn't allow me to expand this little window. I have to keep scrolling up and down. So to make it easier to see what happens next, we're going to close this and go over to sheet two. And I have a visual here to help define this a little bit better. Here are those 90 numbers that Excel used the offset function to determine. Now, I'm going to take those 90 and in my formula, notice I have offset, and I use the match, count, and count if function to determine that range. I'm going to multiply that range times where location equals A2. In this case, that's Cleveland. So here is the list of locations that I have from sheet one here. And where does location equal Cleveland? Well, here I get a true. The rest, since it's Detroit and Pittsburgh, I get a false. And trues are 1, falses are 0. So Excel is going to multiply these 90 times true and false. So I'm going to end up with a series of numbers. These numbers multiplied times a 1 gives me those same numbers. Times a 0 or false, I get 0. So now I've reduced my range down to just this block of 30 numbers. Now, where does system equal stable? That's why I have system equals B2, which is stable. I'll take the rest of these numbers and again, multiply them times either 0 for false, where it was random, or 1 for true, which is stable. And it gets me down to just these 15 numbers here. And then finally, it multiplies those times where type equals C2. And here I only have one row where C2 is the letter A, where I have an A in this small group here. So again, I end up with one false, true, and then three falses. It multiplies that 0 or 1 times those numbers, and I end up with just three numbers. And when I total those up, I get 156. So that is how I was able to use this formula to get the result of 156 using some product and the other functions that were supporting that some product function to get to the values that I want. So how is it now by just adding greater than zero do I end up with that count of three? You can see in here I did have three values that summed up to give me the 156. So how did we do that? Well, let's go over to sheet three and take a look at that. Here I start out with that same group of 90 values, but I've added that greater than zero factor here. So Excel says, okay, are these values greater than zero? Again, instead of resulting in the values, I get either a true or a false because it says 
do these 90 values or are these 90 values greater than zero? So now I have 90 either trues or falses, which again are ones and zeros. These times the number one for Cleveland gives me ones or zeros here, times whether they're random or stable gives me just ones or zeros here, and where they are just the type A gives me just three ones there. You add those up and you end up with value of three. And that's how, by using this, some product offset, etc., by just adding that greater than zero factor at the first array of my sum product, I'm able to determine the count of numbers that are in that range. And that's how we were able to do this in Excel. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found it beneficial, please share it, like it, or give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my blog at my website, excel-bytes.com, or any of the social networks you see below. Have a great day, and happy Exceling.